Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm you know super excited to be you know part of a, an established program with such rich history and all sports and specifically the softball program. Um, so being able to to lead this program, uh, it's an honor. Um, super excited about what we have. Super excited about the seniors that are sitting next to me. Um, there's a lot of veteran leadership here. They've had a lot of success. Um, so it's really for me to try to implement into their system, right, to help them, and then obviously instill what it is that I like to see within a team. But um, you know, it's been a great fall, great um, early January. We're excited to hit the field next Thursday against Dana Hills, and um, you know, we have an established pitching staff: Joe Lee, uh, Gustavo, who was an all-league pitcher last uh, last year, um, Riley, um, and and Morgan McCon McConnell. I got it right. Um, should have all lots of innings for us coming this spring, and uh, super excited about that. And as far as uh, at what you have up here, Ali's uh, going to Harvard, really high IQ kid, uh, great catcher, cannon arm, um, great leader. I told her the other day part of uh, uh, the excitement of taking over this program was being able to coach someone like her. She's really a special person, special athlete, and uh, she's great to be around, uh, humble kid, really great athlete. Marlene, uh, you know, I've coached her for a few years, uh, had the fun experience of coaching Marlene, uh, and thankfully she was able to avoid uh, major shoulder surgery. We thought there for a while she wasn't going to be able to play this, this spring. Uh, it's going to be huge for us to have her because she's a big bat. She'll be in the middle of our order, um, all-league returner, um, going to Arkansas, and we expect really, really big things from her. Uh, and then Hannah is really just a, a gritty, strong-minded kid and athlete. Um, she does things, I talked to her a little bit early in, in the fall, just in regards to kind of the ability that she has. People gravitate towards her. Um, the athletes respect her. And I told her, you have the ability to kind of choose what you have to offer and kind of use it either in a good way or in a bad way, right? And, and she's chosen, obviously, to do it in a good way. And she, she really is a leader on this team. And the girls, again, they respond to her. And it's her grit. She's a catcher by trade, but she'll play second base for us. And again, that's kind of the nature of who she is. She finds a way to get on base. She finds a way to make a play defensively. Uh, just a really, really great kid. And really, the definition of this team is that, you know, I would say, um, you know, getting here and getting to know them, there's just a lot of really strong, smart girls that like to compete. Um, you know, and they, they, we got a few of them having to play per se, out of their natural positions, but they're all willing to put in the work to, to learn and to get better, um, and they all like each other. So for me, I've always loved our culture to be something that they would like to come to the field, that it's not something of a forced entity, that it's something that they truly believe in and they want to be part of. So it's, I'm excited about where we're at right now. I'm excited to get on the field as we go forward. Um, and again, a senior-based team, Atlantis, um, Again, Jolie in the circle, um, Emily Atkinson uh, will have a big year for us offensively. She's really hit the ball well uh, throughout our, sprint, our, our practice games here as we played before the season. Um, so again, just really excited about where we're at and where we're heading. And, and again, this league, it's, it's a monster, right? So, you know, I coached at Chino High and at Roosevelt. Uh, Roosevelt was in a tough league with Norco and Santiago. And so, you know, the experience of having to compete every single game and know that every game is a challenge. Um, you know, it's exciting to come to this league because Trinity League is known to be the best in the country in all sports. Um, I know the coaches that are in this, this league are all established coaches and, and strong programs, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough for us to, to get where we want to go. And obviously here the standard is to win championships. Um, that's why I'm here. And the idea of us, you know, getting that accomplished, it takes a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice, and we know we'll hit some bumps in the road, but at the same time we're prepared, and I believe we're prepared to have a successful season. So super excited for, the, for this year. Wonderful. Thank you. Hannah, talk to me about what you're looking forward to this senior season. Is there a tournament, matchups, you know, talking about the, um, what you're excited for? Um, I'm excited for the leadership opportunity that I'm, like, pre that Sean presented to me, like, in the beginning of the year. Um, kind of being one of like the senior captains like out on the field. Um, it's really, it's an awesome experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Allison, you know, you're headed off to Harvard. Talk to me about, you know, obviously that high academics, travel ball, modern day softball. How are you balancing all those things here um, at school and how are you feel like you're gonna be prepared for the next level? Um, so I've been balancing it for, I feel like a while. I had to start from the beginning to be high academics to, to go to Harvard. 
So um, it's really the support that surrounds me by my coaches and by the teachers and my parents and the girls and stuff that help me even when I'm struggling in a class because I do struggle. Um, so like, yeah, it's the support that helps me get through it and be able to maintain a high GPA. Yeah. Thank you. And Marlene, talk to me about what really makes the Trinity League special. I think it's you know such a different um, experience compared to some of the other leagues. Talk to me about that piece. Um, I think what the Trinity League is about is like high competition, and then also we have good sportsmanship, and we like, you know, we strive to be the best. And you come to the Trinity League, and you're like, oh, okay, like this is gonna be a tough game. We're going into league, like we want to win league, and it's just all about like good sportsmanship, competition, and just at the end of the day, having fun and representing your school really well. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, we'll open up to the media. Thanks. Hey, Sean, uh, we know you uh, pretty well from uh, the Firecrackers and all the great teams you've had over there, um, and then coaching, like you said, in the Big Eight and other you know leagues around. What did you know about the Trinity League before you came over here and, you know, aside after this job, but had you had any experience with those teams? Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, everyone knows if you're playing Modern Day or Orange Lutheran or Jay Sarah, there's just history with it, right? There's a lot of great success and, and athletes. And when I was at Chino, I remember back we played, uh, my daughter was her freshman year, we played uh, Modern Day in the Bullhead Tournament, uh, which we'll be going to here in a month. And it was an epic game, went about 10, 11 innings. They actually beat us one to nothing. Uh, Doug Myers was the coach, you know, legendary Doug Myers. And, uh, and it was just a, a great game. And, and the idea of playing against those teams, it, it, there's something that I can tell you coming from the public school side, right, that, that you competitively want to win, like even more, right? It's an idea of like you know you're playing those schools. So now to be the guy and the team that's that, there's a responsibility that comes with it, right? There's an idea of what we're supposed to be when we hit the field, and that comes with the respect, the way that we carry ourselves, a standard of excellence that comes from academics to behavior to performance. And that's something that excited me to be here. And again, that's not just modern day, that's this league. And, and it's, you know, you watch it in football, you see it in basketball, and there's a standard. You know, I walk into a room and we do our, you know, our athletic department meeting, and they're talking to coach after coach, and they're talking about CIF championship games and CIF championship games and CIF championship games, and it's like, this is no joke, right? There's a responsibility, and, you know, that's why I'm here. You know, I, I came here with the idea of, of that type of uh, goal and accomplishments for our program. And uh, any added pressure that your athletic director happened to be one of the best players uh, well, I in Orange County? Well, I looked up any eligibility left because <laughs> uh, I would love for her to, to be able to play for us. But... Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, part of, again, the, the, you know, when I was interviewed, um, the excitement of the program was knowing that she was the athletic director because, um, you know, for softball, uh, not necessarily the mainstream sport, right, but at the same time having the belief and the support of your administration um, to the fullest, you know, and the idea of knowing, like, okay, if I have a question, if I, because I'm learning the modern day way, right, I'm still struggling with certain aspects. You know, the game's going to be the game. The field's the easy part. Right. Even this is different. We didn't do this in the other programs. Right. So the idea of having someone who fully supports this program and this school is huge. And honestly, I don't think I would have, would have taken this job if it wasn't for the fact that Tia was the athletic director here. And, uh, Marlene, um, can you talk about playing with, uh, you know, for Coach Brush here? And, you know, you have a lot of experience with him and now he's over here at Modern Day with you. Um, what can we expect from from what he's going to bring to the table? Um, from travel ball to high school, he treats all of his players the same. And I really like how he gives you your opportunities and you, you're always working hard. Um, I like how he brings to the table here at Modern Day that he brings his experience and his knowledge and it just helps us all like come together and especially like some of us are playing different positions. So he helps us learn like the different spots and it's not just like getting yelled at when you do a mistake, like it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to learn. And I really like enjoy that about him. And just even without softball, like he's a really good person. He'll treat each of, his, each of the players like his own daughter. And I really appreciate that as a coach. Coach Bob Gibson, Catholic Sports View. You mentioned uh, the, you know, the programs out there, uh, Chino Hills, Norco, we know, obviously Ayala. 
um, good programs out in that area. Can you compare the programs out there to the programs that you've seen, you know, in in, in the Trinity, the, the 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 level of softball, and, and maybe what you learned from watching those great programs out there that that you helped well, implement? We were one at Chino. We went to three straight CIF championship games and won two of them and won a state championship as well. So I know uh, Chino is not Chino Hills in the sense of the economic side of it, but in the softball side of it, we we were really good as well. Um, and then even at Roosevelt last year, we made the semifinals at CIF. So, uh, but yeah, of course, Norco is a big standard out there. You know, Chino Hills has done a great job. And, you know, there's some sim similarities in the sense of, like, you know, established coaches who know how to run a program. Uh, you know, I think, again, that the idea of it is the, 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 the idea of this league and what it means in its totality, right? It's, it's not just about softball in some ways. It's about what each and every school represents um, on, an acad on, on an athletic side. Because um, in some of those programs, maybe their their softball team is pretty good, or maybe they, you know, but there isn't the history of the the whole sports program. I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but in having played them in the past, you know, we always had the highest level of respect for the teams that we played, whether we played a, a modern day like I spoke about or an Orange Lutheran, and you know, we had matchups and you know, uh, we we lost to Mission Viejo one nothing in a CIF championship game. Uh, an epic game between um, you know Taylor McQuillan and Miranda Viramontes that uh, there was one nothing and in nine innings. The first batter of the game was my daughter Amanda Brashear, now a senior at Maryland University. Um, she led off with a base hit. The next hit in that game was in the bottom of the ninth inning to win the game. So a hit started the game and a hit ended the game, and in between was nothing but strikeouts as Taylor and Miranda dominated, which they both went on to Arizona and Utah were great players. And to be part of that night, you know, and that experience was was amazing. Um, but again, just the idea of playing kind of Inland Empire versus Orange County, there is a little bit of that that goes into it. Um, that when you're from the Inland Empire side, you're always trying to prove like, hey, it's not so bad to be out here. You know, I know there's prisons and cows, but um, <laughs> it's not so bad to be out here. Oh, maybe that was a edit. But, um, you know, the idea of competing against the Orange County schools, right, it's, it's a huge thing for all of us out there. And, again, I still live in Chino. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great experience, again, to be just in this league and to compete against the best athletes and some really amazing kids. Dan Albano, uh, Orange County Register. Uh, Allison, so you have a new uh, head coach this year, and then you also, um, you're one of your longtime coaches just recently retired uh, coach uh, Bollinger, what uh, what's what's it been like? Some of these transitions, and what would made Coach Bollinger so significant uh, for you guys? Um, well, first of all, Coach Sean's been a great addition to our softball team, and he's just really good. And everyone vibes with him really well. It's all good all around. And Coach Jim said that he's retired. Um, he's just like an icon in our team and in our um, league as well. And so, yeah, super sad that he's decided to retire, but we know we have the support, so yeah. What, what, what area did he help you the, uh, the most at? You know, you're, where, where did he impact uh, modern day? Um, probably multiple ways. Um, Coach Jim, he dealt with outfield mostly, and he also helped us with like um, hitting as well. And he just really, he was like a good friend to every, every player so yeah he helps mentally and outfield and hitting as well coach Sean so what's this like for you 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 uh you're not you're not going to be able to work with him well you know I, I spoke to him yesterday and I told him I, I always feel like you know the best representation of you know kind of what you are and what you've been is is the the feelings that others show and express towards you when when you leave and um I know each and every one of these girls the amount of love that they had for him it tells you a lot about what he was as a man, and um, you know he'll be he'll be missed. And I, I again speaking to him yesterday, it's almost an open door. You know, anytime he wants to come in there and, and bark at me or bark at the girls or do what he does, you know he's more than welcome. Um, you know, I know even from the past, like if you showed up to a field and you saw Jim, you knew Modern Day was there, and it was like he had a representation of what the school's about. Um, what this program's about, and he bleeds. He taught me a lot in the in the period of time I was with him, just in regards to, um, again, what modern day stands for and what it means. And I've been very fortunate to be able to have conversations with him, with Doug Myers as well, some guys that are really 
you know, uh, modern day, you know, through and through, and it's helped prepare me even for this moment, right? I wouldn't have been as successful at this day to speak now as I would have been back in October without having had the time to talk to Jim and to learn some of the stories in the history. So he'll be greatly missed, but hopefully again, he'll be around and he'll be out there. And, you know, I'm hoping we can do something on a day at the field and honor him uh, as well, because, you know, the sport is, um, is tough. And anybody who's been in this for a long time, you know, deserves you know, guys like Doug, guys like Jim. They've been around for a long time and they've done nothing but, you know, be a, be a, a spokesperson for the sport, for these young ladies, these young athletes. And, and it's made the sport become, look what we're doing, right? Look what we're doing here for these young ladies. And it's amazing. And they're part of that history. And we can't forget that. Lance Smith, Scorebook Live. Uh, you already started touching it on it earlier, how Trinity League, everyone kind of has a target on their backs just because of the prestige and the level of play. Uh, some would say that Modern Day in particular has the biggest target on their back of anyone in the Trinity League. Uh, is that you guys' experience? Um, I mean, certainly with some sports. Is that all sports? Is that softball? I would. These girls have lived it. So. Yeah. Um, I'd say we definitely have a target on our backs because um, we always – finish pretty strong in the league but we also we know that our competition is tough as well so we're not the only ones that have a target on our backs so um, I wouldn't say it's exactly as equal to say football at modern day but we definitely feel target as well got you thank you and for me, I would say to answer a little bit of that is, you know, going to the, the travel side of knowing the expectations of when teams want to compete against established programs. And again, that's what comes with, and it's what excited me about being here was the challenge of that. Because um, the idea of knowing that every team that we compete against, compete against will be excited to, to, to play us. Because again, I was on that other side, you know, when we played modern day, it was like, you could feel it from the energy of the parents. It's like, we're playing modern day. You know, we got to win this game. We got to beat those guys. And you know, now knowing that we get to have that opportunity, it excites me, right? And I, I told Tia in the interview, like, I haven't been nervous in a long time because it's kind of what I do, right? Coach, and you get on the field and you go to, you know, travel stuff, you do what you do, and, you know, I'm nervous. And, and in a sense of a good nervous, though, right? I'm nervous in the idea of knowing that this is going to be a challenge and it's a fun challenge. So it excites me to be sitting here with them knowing that people want to beat Modern Day, that they are excited to play Modern Day and to see what, I may be able to do while I coach at this school. So it's a, it's a great challenge, and, and I'm, I'm glad there's a target. Awesome. Thank you. Hannah, is there a, a, a different kind of style that you think you guys will play? I mean, if we watch, when we watch you this year, is there a, some kind of Sean style that's going to be all of a sudden you're running the, pay, the, the base is different, you're playing <laughs> more small ball, not small ball, anything that you think is distinctive or um, you think is kind of unique that he brings to the table? Um, Coach Sean, even at the start of the year, like made it clear like he's all about competition and like competing and that every game that we go out, we should play like 100% every inning and everything that we do give 100%. Um, we've also been working like situational things. So I think that that's going to be one of our strong suits that we're going to be ready for anything. Um, so yeah, I think competing, coming out, just like working our hardest. So. Coach, how are you going to handle the, uh, the, the pitching staff where you know, you you got three, you know, committed um, pitchers. You know, for colleges. I mean, um, seems like you got a trio. How are you going to manage that? Do you, do you have a number one ace? You know, I don't like to you know look at things and say someone's a one because to me, when you're pitching, you're the one, right? So in reality, anytime they have the ball, they're going to have an expectation to perform. And realistically, they're all capable. Um, some of it will be based upon maybe what we see in our opponent and what we feel will be best situated to attack someone's style. Um, because they're all uniquely different. Um, so we'll be able to kind of look at that. And then, of course, you know, the hot hand kind of dictates too, right? So if, if, if somebody really starts to show themselves, um, you know, I, I try to be a smart guy. So if someone's doing really well, you, you, you make sure that that person's getting an opportunity to continue to do really well. But, again, we're, we're very blessed to know that we can – you know, I can sit back and analyze it a little bit and make these decisions, but they're still ongoing. You know, we have a game later today, you know, practice game, and so, it, you know, they'll get innings and they're, they're going to be evaluated. They know every single thing that they do, they're evaluated. You know, whether it's a practice, whether it's a game, whether it's cage time, whether it's a bullpen, every single second that they're on a ball field, they're being evaluated. So, therefore, it's an ongoing process all the way to the finish line, right? So. 
Sean, we've been talking about the Trinity League, and you guys are also in the toughest division, Division One, um, CIF Southern Section. Um, who are some of the teams that you got your eyes on that, you know, kind of circling, going, okay, at some point this year, I'm going to probably have to take on these guys? Right. Well, I mean, I think, you know, everyone knows that D1 SoCal is the toughest division in the country, right? This is the hotbed for softball. And historically, you've got programs like Norco, who, you know, just won it last year, Los Alamitos. You know, and Rob does an amazing job over at Los Alamitos. Um, we have Norco on our schedule here in two weeks in, uh, in, uh, in tournament play. So, I mean, there's programs like that that you know are always going to be very, very um, competitive and strong, Orange Lutheran. Uh, his, again, historically, so you know the programs that have always been that have always been strong and that are well coached and 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 well ran. Um, you know, for us, you know that excites me. But I always always tell our girls, I we always want to be the best ver version of ourselves. So if we play to our best of our abilities, by by and large, we win more than we don't, and that's really our responsibility. The other things are out of our control per se. So there's going to be tough teams. You're playing in a tough league. That's why you go to modern day. That's why, you, why I'm coaching here is so we can play great teams. And uh, But those are the ones. You know, I think everybody, you know, Chino Hills, we just played them in a scrimmage game on Saturday, and they're loaded. Um, offensively, like, it's amazing how much ta offensive talent that they have. Um, and they got a, a dominant pitcher, too. So um, there, there's at least six to seven programs easily that could win it this year. Um, and it'll be very tough for us, for sure. You know what I mean? But there, there's some strong competition. And uh, this is for the girls. Uh, why don't we start with you, Hannah? I mean, can you talk about that too? Are you guys ready to, to challenge for a D1 title again? I mean, do you think you have the pieces in place to make a run? I think we have it this year. Um, I mean, definitely because we have eight seniors on the team, we're all really hungry to win. I think that that's going to be our biggest thing this year is like going out and like doing the best that we can because it's our last year here. And we kind of want to leave that name for ourselves. And uh, Marlene, and, and for you too, Allison, uh, can you talk about that also? It seems like, you know, hey, you're building towards some senior year. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'll, also, it's about taking the game, like, once we do make it to CIF, taking it one game at a time. You know, we still have to compete every pitch, every inning, every at bat. You, de you never know what's going to happen, but for sure, we're all, like, hungry for it. We, you know, we want to make our last year memorable and just go out there and have some fun and compete with everyone else. Yeah, I'd say our biggest thing is just um, even if we do face some challenges to just come right back up because, like we said, we're hungry and we want to do the best that we can and we want to win. So, yeah, I think we have a chance. Yeah. And maybe, I mean, I now I remember, uh, Marlene, you could talk about it. I mean, you, your season end ended – shockingly early right last year uh, maybe that's something that's going to really f uh, fuel you guys uh, with all the seniors that you guys were talking about yeah for sure it did end a little shorter than we wanted to and that we expected but we just want to come back off of that you know it's a new season we have some new pieces and we have di people in different positions so for sure like this is a, you know going again this is a new season so I think we we can make it a lot further but just again taking it one one game at a time and I'm glad your arm's feeling better. So what position are you are you going to be playing? Um, we'll have to see. <laughs> Shortstop. I think I, I was – thank you for your – I think that's what you, yes. I, Coach had uh, mentioned that. Uh, so I, obviously the arm's uh, doing good. and yeah, she's, she's played third, she's obviously. She's been cleared to swing. And short before, right? she, she's Yeah, she plays yeah. third and short. Um, but she's been cleared to swing the bat, and I think she's shortly to be cleared to being able to start full fully throwing. She's doing it in limited right now. So she might – start early in the year as a DP, depending upon what we get from, from, the, from the, the doctor's office, you know, whatnot. But uh, she, uh, she will definitely be playing shortstop at some point for us, which we're excited. Yeah, and maybe you can do the history a little bit, Marlene. So I know what, what sophomore year you played, short? Yeah. And maybe freshman year? Uh, more third, but I okay. yeah, you know. So you've been going back and forth. Yeah, for sure. Um, just like – going as needed. Um, freshman year we had um, a really loaded team. We had Kelly Gooden playing third. So of course, you know, going into that. And then sophomore year we lost um, Nelly. So then we needed a shortstop there. And then um, junior year I had an ACL injury. So coming back from that, I did play third for the end of the season once I was cleared. And then now hopefully going back to short. <laughs> 
What is your most comfortable position? Um, shortstop. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have high expectations for her. She's going to be an important piece offensively and defensively. Her, her familiarity, because, again, we have some, some athletes, you know, like Hannah, she's still learning not only how to play the positions, you know, the position physically, but even mentally kind of understanding coverages and rotations and her responsibilities and depths and things on certain counts against certain style hitters. And there's just a lot that goes in. I think second base is one of the harder positions to play because there's so much movement and so much responsibility. And not everybody necessarily understands that, but it's it's very tough position. And for her to, uh, she's really done a great job, uh, but it's important for Marlene to take and help Hannah because she's going to be on the field standing next mm -hmm. to her and her experience level is going to be important to make sure she's helping her. So, And Hannah, you're going from what position to second? Uh, catcher. Catcher. To, yeah. Okay, got it. She played second a lot last year here. Yeah, I did. So. My sophomore year, I played second base. Like, yeah. I okay. Uh, Eric Sondheimer from the LA Times. Can you go over to the three pitchers you have and what schools they're going to? Um, Jolie uh, Gustava, who's going to Syracuse. And... Um, Riley's going to Georgia, and Morgan is just recently committed to North Dakota. Okay, that's Riley. Orca, okay. Oh, also, I last name. I'm sorry, Orca. Okay. <laughs> also, since you have experience both at the club and the high school level, you probably dealt with Sarah Willis from uh, Norco. What, what, what? She's coming to my fielding classes when she was nine years old. Okay. <laughs> Fielding, okay, that's good. So that's supposed to be her weakness, right? She pitches and hits. So. She can do everything. Right, so explain what makes her so uh, special. I um, mean, she's a, f a physical specimen. You know, she's as, as, as good of a, uh, an athlete playing softball as, as anybody I've probably seen. And she's going to do amazing things, does amazing things. Um, again, competing against her, um, she started in Chino Rec League, which is where I used to coach way back in the day. So. Um, I've known her, her family, great family, and she's a great athlete, um, and um, she's definitely tough. Again, we played her last year when I was at Roosevelt, and she's at Norco, and um, she's not only tough to get a hit against, she's tough to get out, you know, because she, she can swing the bat. So, um, but yeah, she's an amazing athlete. Thank you. We'll walk her. <laughs> <laughs>